Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we will continue the last session. So, question is, a development team is using AWS code commit to version control application code and AWS code pipeline to orchestrate software deployments. The team has decided to use a remote main branch as the trigger for the pipeline to integrate code changes. A developer has pushed code changes to commit repository but noticed that the pipeline had no reaction even after 10 minutes. So the question is which of the following actions should be taken to troubleshoot this issue? Options are A. Check that an Amazon event bridge rule has been created for the main branch to trigger the pipeline. Option B. Check that the code pipeline service role has permission to access the code commit repository. Option C. Check that the developer's IAM role has permission to push to the code commit repository. Option D. Check to see if the pipeline failed to start because of code commit errors in Amazon CloudWatch logs. So the correct answer is option A. Next question is, a company's developers use Amazon EC2 instances as remote workstations. The company is concerned that users can create or modify EC2 security groups to allow unrestricted inbound access. A DevOps engineer needs to develop a solution to detect when users create unrestricted security group rules. The solution must detect changes to security group rules in near real time, remove unrestricted rules and send email notifications to the security team. The DevOps engineer has created an AWS Lambda function that checks for security group ID from input, removes rules that grant unrestricted access and send notifications through Amazon Simple Notification Service. So the question is, what should the DevOps engineer do next to meet the requirements? Options are A. Configure the Lambda function to be invoked by the SNS topic. Create an AWS CrowdTrail subscription for the SNS topic. Configure a subscription filter for security group modification events. Option B. Create an Amazon Event Bridge Schedule rule to invoke the Lambda function. Define a schedule pattern that runs the Lambda function every hour. Option C. Create an Amazon Event Bridge event rule that has the default event bus as the source. Define the rules event pattern to match EC2 security group creation and modification events. Configure the rule to invoke the Lambda function. Option D. Create an Amazon Event Bridge custom event bus that subscribes to events from all AWS services. Configure the Lambda function to be invoked by the custom event bus. So the correct answer is option C. Next question is, a DevOps engineer is creating an AWS CloudFormation template to deploy a web service. The web service will run on Amazon EC2 instances in a private subnet behind an application load balancer. The DevOps engineer must ensure that the service can accept requests from clients that have IPv6 addresses. So the question is, what should the DevOps engineer do with the CloudFormation template so that IPv6 clients can access the web service. Options are A. Add an IPv6 CIDR block to the VPC and the private subnet for the EC2 instances. Create root table entries for the IPv6 network. Use EC2 instances types that support IPv6 and assign IPv6 addresses to each EC2 instance. Option B. Assign each EC2 instance an IPv6 elastic IP address, create a target group, and add the EC2 instances as targets. Create a listener on port 443 of the ALB and associate the target group with the ALB. Option C. Replace the ALB with a network load balancer that is NLB. Add an IPv6 CIDR block to the VPC and subnets for the NLB and assign the NLB an IPv6 elastic IP address. Option D, add an IPv6 CIDR block to the VPC and subnets for the ALB. 
create a listener on port 443 and specify the doll stack IP address type on the ALB. Create a target group and add the EC2 instances as targets. Associate the target group with the ALB. So the correct answer is option D. Next question is, a company uses AWS organizations and AWS control tower to manage all the company's AWS accounts. Next question is, a company uses AWS organizations and AWS control tower to manage all the company's AWS accounts. The company uses the enterprise support plan. A DevOps engineer is using account factory for Terraform that is AFT to provision new accounts. When new accounts are provisioned, the DevOps engineer notices that the support plan for the new accounts is set to the basic support plan. The DevOps engineer needs to implement a solution to provision the new accounts with the enterprise support plan. So the question is, which solution will meet these requirements? Options are A. Use an AWS config conformance pack to deploy the account part of organizations AWS config rule and to automatically remediate any non-compliant accounts. Option B. Create an AWS Lambda function to create a ticket for AWS support to add the account to the enterprise support plan. Grant the Lambda function the support resolve case permission. Option C. Add an additional value to the control tower parameters input to set the AWS enterprise support parameter as the organization's management account number. Option D. Set the AFT feature enterprise support feature flag to true in the AFT deployment input configuration. Do we redeploy AFT and apply the changes? So the correct answer is option D. Next question is, a company's DevOps engineer uses AWS systems manager to perform maintenance tasks during maintenance windows. The company has a few Amazon EC2 instances that require a restart after notifications from AWS Health. The DevOps engineer needs to implement an automated solution to re-immediate, sorry, it's remediate these notifications. The DevOps engineer creates an Amazon event bridge rule. So the question is, how should the DevOps engineer configure the event bridge rule to meet these requirements? Options are a. Configure an event source of AWS Health, a service of EC2, and an event type that indicates instance maintenance. Target a systems manager document to restart the EC2 instance. Option B. Configure an event source of systems manager and an event type that indicates a maintenance window. Target a systems manager document to restart the EC2 instance. Option C. Configure an event source of AWS Health a service of EC2 and an event type that indicates instance maintenance. Target a newly created AWS Lambda function that registers an automation task to restart the EC2 instance during a maintenance window. Option D. Configure an event source of EC, sorry, it's EC2 and an event type that indicates instance maintenance. Target a newly created AWS Lambda function that registers an automation task to restart the EC2 instance during a maintenance window. So the correct answer is option C. Next question is, a company has containerized all of its in-house quality control applications. The company is running Jenkins on Amazon EC2 instances which require patching and upgrading. The compliance officer has requested a DevOps engineer begin encrypting build artifacts since they contain company intellectual property. So the question is, what should the DevOps engineer do to accomplish this in the most maintainable manner? Options are A. Automate patching and upgrading using AWS Systems Manager on EC2 instances and encrypt Amazon EBS volumes by default. Option B. Deploy Jenkins to an Amazon ECS cluster and copy build artifacts to an Amazon S3 bucket with default encryption enabled. Option C. 
leverage AWS code pipeline with a build action and encrypt the artifacts using AWS Secrets Manager. Option D, use AWS code built with artifact encryption to replace the Jenkins instance running on EC2 instances. So the correct answer is option B. Next question is, an IT team has built an AWS cloud formation template so others in the company can quickly and reliably deploy and terminate an application. The template creates an Amazon EC2 instance with a user data script to install the application and an Amazon S3 bucket that the application uses to serve static web pages while it is running. All resources should be removed when the CloudFormation stack is deleted. However, the team observes that CloudFormation reports an error during stack deletion and S3 bucket created by the stack is not deleted. So the question is, how can the team resolve the error in the most efficient manner to ensure that all resources are deleted without errors? Options are A. Add a delelian policy attribute to the S3 bucket resource with the value delete, forcing the bucket to be removed when the stack is deleted. Option B. Add a custom resource with an AWS Lambda function with the depends on attribute specifying the S3 bucket and an IAM role. Write the Lambda function to delete all objects from the bucket when request type is delete. Option C. Identify the resource that was not deleted. Manually empty the S3 bucket and then delete it. Option D. Replace the EC2 and S3 bucket resources with a single AWS OpsWorks Stax resource. Define a custom recipe for the stack to create and delete the EC2 instance and the S3 bucket. So the correct answer is option B. That's all for today. Thank you everyone. And please do not forget to like and subscribe our channel.